In lesson two, we'll look at the components that make up a basic SQL command, including the select, from, where, and order by clauses. I'm going to begin by creating a new blank database. Now, this should be familiar to you if you've taken my Access Beginner courses, which you should have. I'll start with a blank database. I'm going to call this my SQL Seminar Database, and I'm going to put it in my trusted folder. I've set up a trusted location so I don't get warning messages about macros and VB code every time I run the database. And I talk about this in my other classes. I'll hit Create. Now, Access puts me right into Table Design View here, so I'm going to close that. Whenever I work with Access, there's one thing that I have to change about the current database. Under File, come down to Options. On the Current Database tab, I personally hate tab documents. I have to flip it over to Overlapping Windows. It's a pet peeve of mine. I have to do it. I'll click OK. It says I have to close and reopen the database for the specified option to take effect. I'll hit OK. I'll close the database down and reopen it. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a simple table, create and then table design. Now this is not a beginner class, so I'm not going to make you watch all the steps, but I'll put together a real simple table. Very simple. I've got customer ID, which is my auto number, first name and last name, which is text, notes, a memo field, number of children, which is number, customer sense, a daytime field, credit limit, which is currency, is active, which is yes or no. That just indicates whether or not the customer is on my mailing list. I wanted to try and get a couple of different fields from different data types. Let's also add address fields, address, city, state, and zip code, because I like to do different queries, saying, like, let's see all the customers from New York or California. That's always easy to do with query examples. Now, if you don't want to create these tables or do all this typing that I'm doing with the SQL statements and all that, I will put the database up on the website. I'll give you a link in a moment. And you can go and download the database if you want to cheat. I strongly recommend, though, that you build this stuff yourself. You learn more by doing rather than just watching. So while I will put the database online for you to grab if you want to, I do recommend if you really want to learn this stuff, take the time, build the tables, type in the SQL code. You'll get a lot more out of it if you actually do it than just watching me do it. Okay? Okay, here's a link to the sample database file. Go to 599cd.com, question mark, X-S-T-U-D-B, in all caps, as in X student database, S-T-U-D-B. And again, you can download it, you can look through it, but if you want to really learn this stuff, build the database yourself. Okay, I'm going to save this table as my customer T. For those of you familiar with my classes, you know they like that, and all my tables in the letter T, so I know other tables. And this comes in handy a lot more when you're working with SQL, because in my other access classes, I let you know that sometimes when you're looking through lists of objects, um, you might not know whether something is a table or a query, because you could get data from both. Well, this comes into play even more in SQL, because when you're writing an SQL statement, it's sometimes handy to know whether or not you're getting data from a table or a query, and the T will tell you it's, it's a table. Um, you might also see some people refer to it like that, TBL customer. Either way is fine. Use whatever method you prefer. I've been doing it this way for a long, long time now, so that's the way that I've always done it, customer T. I'll hit OK. I'll get yelled about a primary key. I'll say yes. That'll make my customer ID the primary key. Now I can flip over to table view and put some data in. Now this is the boring part. Um, you should put some data in, put a couple records in. I'm going to put probably, I don't know, 10 or so records in. Again, if you want to copy the table from the website, go ahead. I know typing in data is no fun, but I'll just put in a bunch of different records with some different types of data, like different states and such, so that I can get some results when we actually make some queries. Okay, I lied. I only put five records in. But I've got a bunch of different names in here. And I've got some different uh, credit limits. And a couple are active, a couple are not. Let's make this person not. We've got a couple of different states in here, a couple of different zip codes. That's all we need, just a little bit of varying data. So when we actually start running our queries, we can see that they're working. We'll add more data if needed. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times already, you can 
use queries to break this data down. Now, obviously, we only have five records here, but assume we have 5,000 or 50,000 records in our database. And the boss says, okay, I want a simple list of customers with, um, with their credit limit and sorted by last name. Well, that's pretty easy to do if we know how to build a query and access. So as a real quick review, let's just make a simple query. We'll go to create, and then I like query design. You get the show table window. You can put tables or queries or both in your queries. So our customer T is the only thing in this database. We'll hit add. There we can see the query by example window. And I'll slide this bar up here. There we go. And now we just simply pick the fields that we want in our query. I want first name, last name, and the boss wants to see credit limit. So there's credit limit. Okay. To sort it by last name, we come right over here. We drop down the sort box and pick ascending. And that's all we have to do. And normally I would save this query as my customer queue. You can give it a longer name if you want to. Now it's a saved query over here in my list of objects. And when I run this query, you can see there's the results. I've got first name and last name and credit limit, and it's sorted by last name, J-K-R-S-W. Okay? But what is Access actually doing? When you do this graphically, when you build this query, what is Access creating? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to SQL view. Drop that box down there and go to SQL view. And there it is. This is what Access is actually putting together for us. Now, because that text is kind of small and because my video recording software doesn't easily let me zoom in and out, I'm going to just copy this and bring it over to Microsoft Word so I can zoom in for you. This is what Access is generating. And this is a very simple SQL statement that consists basically of a select clause and a from clause. Basically, it says select these fields from this data source, which in this case is a table. And here we have an order by down here, which is a sort. Let's ignore the order by for now. Get rid of that. Just ignore it. We've got select customer t dot first name, comma, customer t dot last name, comma, customer t dot credit limit. Those are three fields we want from customer t, our table. That's all it is. And the order by this thing just says which field we want to order the list by, order the query results by. In this case, customer t dot last name. Now, when you put all this together and you run it, you get the exact same results. That's all the graphical query designer is doing is creating this SQL statement for you. Now, you can actually clean this up a little bit. For example, if you're only working with one table, you don't need the customer T dot first name for each of those fields. You don't need the customer T there. You can get rid of it if you want to. It makes your query a little bit more readable. Okay. Only if you have multiple tables do you have to include that customer T dot. So if you're writing a query, if you're writing a query for a form or for a combo box, for example, you don't have to keep typing in customer T dot first name, customer T dot last name. You can just type in first name, last name, credit limit from customer T. The next thing, you'll notice that Access capitalizes the keywords in SQL. Select, from, and order by are all capitalized. That's just to make your SQL a little bit easier to read. SQL is not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter whether you type everything in lowercase or uppercase or mixed case. It doesn't make a difference. Just for you to make it more readable, I suggest keep all of your SQL commands, and you'll learn what they are as we go along, in all caps. Now, if you want to change the fields that are visible in your SQL statement, all you have to do is add them to your select statement or remove them. Let's say you don't want credit limit. You can just get rid of it. And instead, let's say you want the state and zip code. State, comma, zip. Those are my field names. Okay? And I'll copy this. And let's go back over to Access here. And I'll just paste that into Access. And you can do your work right in here. I'm just copying and pasting it to make it a little bit easier for you to read because I can't zoom in here easily. Once I've made that change, I can go ahead and run it. And you can see the fields have changed. I no longer have credit limit. I now have state and zip code. As long as they're valid fields from your table here, right, in your list of fields, you can put them into your SQL statement. 
Now, if you want to have all of the fields from your table show up in your query, you can replace the list of field names here with an asterisk, the little star. It's usually over the 8, hit Shift 8. Select star from customer T, order by last name. Says give me all of the fields from my customer table and sort them by last name. So again, I'll copy this and switch back over to access and paste it in or just change it here. And now when I run it, you can see that I've got all of the fields. Now, for very small queries, that's not a problem. I use the star all the time. If you only got a bunch, you know, you only got a couple of dozen fields and a few hundred records, no big deal. But keep in mind, if you have very, very large tables and you don't need all of those fields, don't put them in your query because you will slow your database down. Okay, the more information that Access has to pull out of the table, the slower it's going to get. So if you're noticing that your queries are running a little slow, take a look and see if you can reduce some of those fields. It's usually better to select the fields that you want in here. First name, last name. Another style note, you don't have to have these separate clauses on separate lines. You could put everything together like this on one line. Select first name, last name from customer T order by last name. And in fact, when we get into writing SQL and VBA code in part two, we will do this. We'll just put a simple query together in a one line statement. Okay? However, to make things more readable, Access will do this automatically for you. It'll put the separate clauses on separate lines, as you can see right here. And that's fine. That's how I like to do it myself when I'm doing it in the query design. It's certainly perfectly acceptable to do that. The semicolon on the end there, right there, that little guy, that semicolon, is not necessary in Access. Okay, Microsoft Access will generate that semicolon for you on the end of SQL commands that it creates. You don't have to have it in Access, but it's a good idea to use it because a lot of database servers do require that semicolon at the end of your SQL statements. Okay, so you don't need to use it in Access, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of using it. It simply indicates the end of the SQL statement because sometimes with different database servers, you can have multiple SQL statements in the same command, and that's getting a little more advanced than we're talking about now. But I just wanted to mention to you that it's there. Use it if you remember to use it. You don't have to use it, but you should get in the habit of using it. And for those of you who haven't taken my Access Beginner courses, I strongly suggest you don't put spaces in your field names or your table names. Because if you do have spaces in here, that first name now has to be written like this with square brackets around it. And this is one of the reasons why I tell all my beginner basic newbie users, don't put spaces in your field names or table names. Because now you've got to have from customer table like that. Okay? So I strongly recommend that you don't put spaces in your names. I like to just use capital letters to indicate the breaks in words. You can use underscores if you want to, like that first name. That's perfectly fine as well. But first name like that is what I prefer. Now, we will talk about these clauses in more detail in the upcoming lessons here. There are four basic clauses that you're going to come in contact with while we're writing our beginner SQL statements. There's the select, which allows you to pick your fields. There's from where you pick your table or tables. You can have multiple tables in here, and we'll see how this works. There's order by, which lets you sort. And then there's also a where condition, okay? Where, for example, state equals New York. And we'll go, we'll go over the where clause in a few minutes in more detail. But those are the four basic commands right there. Select, from, where, and order by. And you don't have to have a where or order by, but you do have to have a select and a from. And that, right there is the basics of making an SQL statement. 